makes sense. Anyway, welcome to ICBTS, where today we are going to talk about da 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 your freedoms and rights as per the usual. Yes. So today your we're, freedoms that are constantly be taken away, being taken away without you realizing it. That too. Today we're going yes. to talk about the glorious Sixth Amendment. Yes, there are more than five. There might be seven. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. We are going to research whether or not there might be eight. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Probably not, but we'll see. Okay. So anyway, Brett, what is the Sixth Amendment? The Sixth Amendment to the Constitution of the United States of America says, In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law, and to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation. Semicolon. To be confronted with the witnesses against him. Semicolon. To have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. Okay. That's a lot of words. That is a lot of words. So let's talk about the easy part of that one, which I think is the last sentence, which is... To have counsel. And to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. That's just the, you, if you, you don't have... You have the right a, to a lawyer. Yeah, everyone knows that. These are basically your Miranda rights. Yeah. The Sixth Amendment, effectively. Kind of pretty much, yeah. Um, so yeah, you have the right to, to someone who knows the law. Now, I think that, that that is obviously a good thing, but I do think we've reached a point in the world where, oh my God... There are so many laws, and there are so many loopholes, <laughs> How could and there are so know? many appeals and things you have to do correctly to appeal, and it has to go in this order and that order. Well, that's why. Yeah. What is it? So, like, yeah, now this is more re- relevant than ever. That's why you have to have you know, a lawyer because you could possibly you couldn't possibly know all the different laws you may have broken. Right, or or or, or all the ways to even just go about your defense it's mm-hmm. like how do i how do i appeal this oh well you have to fill out this form and that form or file for an injunction or a brief or all these it's like oh my god you know all of a sudden it's seven months later and the trial hasn't even happened yet right exactly and so that's where now this first sentence comes in where the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial I would be willing to argue that we have reached a point in the world where there is no trial on earth that That fits the requirement of speedy as laid out in the Constitution. Yeah. To me, a speedy trial is you are accused of something, and within about a week, that's that's where they screwed up in this amendment. They didn't put... A length of time, right? In here. There was no exactly. There was no and, qualifier. Yeah, so they <laughs> speedy is so by what? Nebulous. Yeah, what, what is speedy? Is speedy five years? Yeah. Is speedy a month? Is it a day? Is it a day? Is it twelve hours? I, I I have no idea. It's whatever the judge wants it. To exactly, be. and yeah. So I, I mean, it, that part of it, I think we've gone completely off the rails on mm-hmm. where trials take months and months if not years i mean if you've watched making a murderer you know exactly what i'm talking about Mm -hmm. you know stuff that drags on and on and on uh so then there's the public which i don't think that's infringed i don't think that's really infringed too much to actually we don't know yeah i guess we don't (laughs) but again it depends on what you mean by public yeah and i think pretty much every and i guess really that's the question is okay public so would that mean that? Because I'm sure they limit the amount of people who are allowed in the courtroom. Obviously, I think. I Would think that they, be against the Constitution. No, I think. I think they. When they say public trial, they mean you can know about it. You sure. know what's happening. It's right. there's no. You're not getting black bagged and never seen again. Right. So, I mean, I guess that's not something we could. You can't prove the negative for that because if it's a private trial that no one knows no one knows about. about how could you... I guess if you found out that a trial happened and someone went to jail and no one was told about it. Yeah. Then, you know. That's true. But, yeah. So, I don't think public trial is really in violation very much. Uh, so, there's the next part. By an impartial, impartial jury. Impartial jury. That is infringed for every single trial that happens. I well, think. and that's the question. Is like, okay, so you say impartial jury. So, I think what they've done in, in the jury selection process is say, well, we have to know it's impartial. So... <laughs> 
it's not impartial if you hate cops and a cop that is on trial, right? right? That's the part of the Constitution that they use to do their whole jury selection BS. Mm-hmm. And I think Well, he can't be impartial if he's white. He can't be impartial if he's right. black. And I think you've created a feedback loop at that point. Yeah. Because then the person deciding whether or not you're impartial has to be impartial. Mm-hmm. And, and there is not a person happen. on this earth that is actually impartial. There is no one on the earth that has zero biases. Mm -hmm. Everyone has biases. I have biases, Brad has biases, everyone watching this video has biases. Everyone who's ever been born or ever will be born has biases. So the only way, in my opinion, to to create any kind of impartial jury is for it to be fairly random. Random lotto. Right. And And you just have to deal with whatever you do. You just have to do it because like we've talked about in other videos, the thing about the Constitution is the limitations it puts on government and the rights that it gives to you come with associated duties. Yes. So the rights... Jury duty. ...as laid out in here to all of these wonderful things that make it so that you we can't just throw you in the gulag mm-hmm. comes with the duty of you being on the jury for other people who get accused mm-hmm. and being impartial. And making $12 as much as a possible. day. Right. <laughs> That is so insulting to me. Just don't pay me. <laughs> yeah, just, you know what? Just don't pay me. Give the money to charity $12. or something. Are you serious? Get out of here. Um, partial so yeah, jury impartial of, jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed. So that means you can't be tried in Montana for, a, for something you did here. Get in Florida, right. But they do kind of go around that sometimes because, like, like, as an example, in the Stephen Avery thing, you know, he got tried in a different county, I believe, because they decided that Manitowoc County was biased. Was, yeah. Right? Which I think is a good thing. I do think that there should be a provision for that. If, right. If, you know. Because they wanted to get him <clears throat> for that previous thing. Right. And, but it so, still worked. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, an impartial jury, I think that kind of, yeah, I think the whole jury selection process is insane. And I, and I honestly think people getting out of jury duty is kind of insane. Like, oh, just go act real crazy and then you just get out of it, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, no, this is your duty as a citizen. If that guy's crazy, you, the rest of you 11 have to deal with that. Right. <laughs> like, and that's the thing. People just pretend to be crazy. You right. Know? Like, I, and I'm not saying, like, actual adjudicated mentally ill people should be on juries. Like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm okay with that. But if you're just average Joe and you're like, oh, I'm just going to pretend to be really weird so that I can get out of this. Not only do I kind of think you're a shitty person for doing that, but, like, I don't think you, that should be allowed. <laughs> mm. um, Doctors know it maybe. Yeah. Like, again, if you have court records that say, like, no, nah, I'm, like, mentally disabled, like, <laughs> okay, fine. We can deal with you that. Know, we can deal with that. But anyway... So, Which uh, district shall have been previously ascertained by law? I think that's an important point because that just means that that basically means if we accuse you of a crime and you know you have to be tried in this district, we can't just make up a new district. <laughs> that's you what know? I was trying to figure. I was like, could it really be that simple? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That? So I mean, the districts have to be drawn out, you know, previously ascertained. So we can't just be like, uh. Your district is now these 12 people that we picked. No, it's actually that corner you were standing on when you supposedly assaulted this guy. That's a different That's a different district. district. So now... On Wednesdays? Yeah. So you're going to this place. You get no trial. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Oops. So, so yeah, that's actually a very important caveat to that. Uh, And And to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation. So that's effectively, yeah, like your Miranda rights. Yeah. You shall know The cops why. have to tell you why they're arresting you. Yeah. Sometimes they don't. Right. Even Which watching cops. You would shows, think is unconstitutional. Why am I under arrest? You have to tell me why I am under well, arrest. Well, yeah, the way they get away with that sometimes is they say, I'll tell you that in a minute once right. you're in the cop car. Which under is not arrest. supposed to be how that's right. supposed to work. I mean, yeah, I guess the way you fix that is as you're putting the cuffs on, you should be told why. Right. And I think this brings up an interesting point. And, and I know we've, we've, I think we've talked about this before, how it's, how it's easy to be an authoritarian mm-hmm. and how it's really easy to watch cops and be like, yeah, get him, tase him, <laughs> beat his head in the car while you put him in there. Oh, Cause God. you see that, Oh, he had meth or, Oh, mm-hmm. he, and was, he's got he blew a stop sign <laughs> and like, you know, whatever, <laughs> smashed a car. But it's like, we all have we the gotta same pump rights. the brakes, you yeah. know. You, there has to be the innocent until proven guilty. That has to be part of the system. Mm-hmm. I think what people miss with that is 
they you, you watch it on Cops or Live PD or whatever, and you see, oh, we saw him do it on the camera. Okay, proven guilty means by a by court, a of, court law. of law. Right, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't mean you saw him do it. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, we have that, and then to be confronted with the witnesses against him. And in our, in our conversation before this video, you brought up a really good point about witness protection. Yeah. And, and I, and I, I get, think, the, and again, I think maybe I was in my head kind of not thinking about it correctly, but because I, I believe they, you know, like people who talk, you know, about the mob or something like that, mm -hmm. they go into witness protection after so it's like they are facing their accuser. They're sitting in the courtroom saying, yeah, I saw this guy do X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. And then they're sent And then a afterwards they're given a new identity and sent somewhere so that they don't get killed. Mm -hmm. So I think just in my head when I was first thinking about it, I was like, oh, yeah, how do they, how do they reconcile that with the Constitution? But I think that's got to be how they do it. Yeah, because if you just set them behind a curtain or something, I, right. I, I think that would be a – Yeah, that would be a violation of, of right to face your accuser. Um, because that's effectively what that is. You have the right to face your accuser, and you know, because again, it seems, it, and 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 this is, I think, a really important point to talk about with this one, and especially all these other ones. I think there's an idea that this is obvious, mm -hmm. right? And and I feel like people ha have this issue about a lot of things. You say these things to people, and they're like, "Yeah, of course," right? But when this was written. <laughs> That was not a yeah, of course. Right. And there are still a lot of places on this earth, most of them in fact, mm -hmm. where this is not a yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I think as we go further in time, that's why people that's why people give up rights. Mm -hmm. Because they think, well, obviously. Why wouldn't we? Why would this? that not be a right? <laughs> You've had that as a right for so many generations at this point mm -hmm. that you're almost okay with giving it up because you're like, well, yeah, of course, of course. What do you mean? Yeah. I'll always have that. Right, I'll always have that. It's never going to go away. That's silly. Regardless of the fact that these rights, as, as laid out here, have only existed for a very brief period of time in the history of mankind, mm -hmm. realistically, as, as laid out here. So... I think that's a really important thing to think about all the time, no matter whether it's this or it's anything else that you're thinking about. Is this only obvious because someone thought of this and now it's been obvious my whole life? You know, is that the only right. reason this seems obvious to me? And uh, yeah, I think if we all did that a little more often, it probably we would more lose. More motivation to right. keep it going. To keep our rights. <laughs> um, so yeah, the next part is have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor. So basically, you have the right to bring people who will speak of you in speak, a positive light. Exactly. We'll say, <laughs> nah, he totally didn't do that. Right. I he was with me all night. Again, this is another thing that is new. Right. It <laughs> seems obvious. <laughs> Where you, know. you have just imagine being in a English courtroom in the 1500s or whatever. You don't even have to go back that. Imagine if, the Salem witch trials. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> imagine he's a witch. All right, kill him. Throw him. What? <laughs> yeah, I totally saw him float some stuff. Kill him. Uh, like how high? Oh, like six <laughs> feet off the ground. Oh, oh he's definitely much. a witch. Burn him. Like my neighbor says, I'm not a witch. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but that crazy girl said you were so. <laughs> Burn them. Can my neighbor talk? No. No. <laughs> no. Exactly. So, no. so, again, these things seem obvious, but for a long time, they were not very obvious. Yep. And uh, I think we already kind of discussed yeah, we the talked last about the council. The council for your defense. Um, so that's kind of the long and short of the Sixth Amendment. Any uh, yeah, normally additional I, thoughts? Yeah, normally I come up with a court case for these, but, I mean, it's... There's nothing I thought noteworthy. Right. To bring so up. I mean, like obviously there are court cases that that pertain there's, to yeah, this. Yeah, there's court cases literally every day that right deal because with somebody this. didn't read, get their Miranda rights read to them. You know, somebody who knows wasn't offered. I mean, I counsel. guess I could have talked about right. the original original Miranda rights thing, but I mean, you can just Wikipedia that. That's right. easy. So the point here is. Yeah, there, there's cases every day that, but there, I, you know, there wasn't a specific big one that was really, you know, seemingly important. Mm -hmm. So, but you can imagine, you know, what the cases would be like if it exactly. did. Exactly, you can imagine what the cases would be like, you know, 
and and it is somewhat amazing that there aren't more cases about this. Like my my trial was very clearly not speedy or something mm-hmm. like that. You know, um, again, that's where the the one one of the points I will say the founding fathers failed is by writing speedy and not saying within a month or right. something. Yeah, because that is one of those things that changes with time. Speedy could have meant something very different back then than mm-hmm. it does now. So, okay, well, that's the Sixth Amendment. Um, Leave us your comments, leave us your questions, anything like that. If you like these videos, throw us a thumbs up. Um, stay tuned stay for tuned. the seventh amendment. There are seven? I think so. I'm 90% sure. That is news to me. <laughs> um, yeah. I think people know we're being facetious. Don't forget, <laughs> do, get, get pumped for our Twinkies on Pizza video. That's going to be exciting. I can tell that you didn't know I was going to say that when I said that. ICBTS, I've been talking out. about that for so long, <laughs> and you're, you've been saying no.